Just a few years ago, I was a pastor at St. Luke's in Thibodeau, and I was there for five years, and probably uh, five of the best years of my life, and fell in love with the community, and uh, look back on those times with great affection, not only for the beauty of the, the community itself, but, but certainly for the vibrant uh, experience of Sunday Mass. Not only was the music great, and not only was the participation great, but uh, the instantaneous feedback from the community uh, was something that really kind of fed me as a preacher and certainly, I think, set free my heart as a priest. Oftentimes, in the midst of the homilies, I would get the, the amen right back to me, and that would certainly let me know that God was doing something on track that day. On a very particular Sunday, um, I really was obedient to the Lord and was delivering a message that I knew came from Him. It was a, a sobering feel that I think was, was drawing the community into a, a deepened commitment and a deeper conversion in our relationship with the Lord. And, and didn't hear any amens that day. It was a very uh, quiet Sunday in the church as we were all being really uh, drawn in uh, to the reality of our relationship with God. And at the end of Mass, I was talking to uh, one of the more legendary members of the community, Mr. Charles Mack, and he said, Father, um, you didn't get a whole lot of amens today. But he says there's a, there's a saying in, in our community that if you can't say amen, say ouch. And we kind of laughed about that and, and laughed about uh, the beauty of the day. And, and boy, I just know that that's true. If you can't say amen, sometimes all you can say is ouch. And I think it's been one of those ouch kind of weeks. Uh, if we look at it uh, from first glance, you know, Tuesday, we looked at this question that came from Romans about, um, you know, are we ashamed of the gospel? That, that line that came right out of Romans, that St. Paul's not ashamed of the gospel. And really, we felt the Lord asking us that question. Are we ashamed of the gospel? Are we unnecessarily quiet when we are being asked to defend our faith. Yesterday, as we, uh, we unpacked uh, the, the psalm, Psalm 62, we looked at um, the disturbance in our heart. And a lot of times the reason that we are silent and we don't defend our faith is not because we're ashamed of the gospel, but it, maybe it's just we're, we're ashamed of, of the rejection that we might feel if we proclaim the gospel. And a lot of times the the disturbance in our heart reveals what we are attached to. So if you look at those two uh, questions that the Lord asked us this week, are we ashamed of the, the gospel? And, and secondly, what are we attached to? It's been one of those weeks where perhaps we can't say amen, but maybe we can say ouch. And uh, I think that theme almost unfolds further still as we look at the first reading today from Romans chapter 3. Now, at first glance, it may not make a lot of sense to us, um, a lot of conversation about justification. And then, of course, there is the conversation that St. Paul's having about the principle of faith and um, are we justified by works? Or are we justified by faith? And, and in fact, this, uh, this very text right here from Romans, along with other texts, is, is one of the foundations that uh, Martin Luther used in the Protestant Reformation as he split from the Catholic Church, starting his own religion. And, um, and really challenging the church to answer the question about how is it that we get to heaven? And that's really what this whole conversation of justification about the, the reading today is. And as I was looking at the reading from Romans chapter 3 and the first reading at Mass today, it really kind of lifted up, I think, a question that is in line with what we've been talking about this, this week. And that is, can we defend our Catholic faith? You know, I think a lot of times Catholics get asked questions by non-Catholic Christians, perhaps former Catholics who now go to other churches or, or other uh, cradle Protestants who grew up with um, their understanding of, of theology and, and perhaps a skewed understanding of the Catholic faith. And in their questioning Catholics about why do Catholics believe what you believe, a lot of times, you know, I in the past, I, I didn't have the answer to that. When they would ask me questions about the Bible, or when they would ask me questions about different tenets of the Catholic faith. You know, a lot of times in the past, I didn't have the answers for that. And, and certainly, I think, if we get asked a question like today from Romans 3 about justification, about works, and, and how is it that you get to heaven, I think, by and large, a lot of Catholics would not know how to answer that question. And so, if you look at Tuesday's question about being ashamed of the gospel or, quote-unquote, defending the faith, it, it's right there in our hearts again today as we look at Romans chapter 3. Can we defend the faith? Either can we defend what it means to be Christian to non-Christians, that's what Tuesday was about, or can we defend our Catholic faith, which is somewhat where I think the readings invite us today. It's a good question. Can we defend our faith? 
and, and I think with, with no judgment and with, without being afraid about anything, I think it's just important for us to ask that question. Um, now, I can be honest with you. If you ask me anything about LSU football, about the season, about who's playing, who's not playing, about where they're projected to be and are they doing better and why was the defense suspected to be so weak this year and why they're doing better, I can answer all of those questions. And that's about LSU football. If you ask me anything about cooking, uh, especially the things I love to cook, I can tell you why I make the gumbo the way I make the gumbo. I can tell you why my mom made her gumbo the way she made her gumbo. I can answer questions about, um, about the joie de vie of South Louisiana. I can answer questions about all kinds of things that have nothing to do with my eternal salvation. But my faith, my faith in Jesus Christ, gosh, a lot of times in my own life, I just felt stuck. I could not answer the questions about the most important things in life. Now, certainly, as I um, am a priest now, a, a lot has changed in my life and just the, the, the sheer opportunities for ministry and you know, wanting to be a good shepherd has propelled me into learning more about our faith. But, but you know, what, what about you? Like, if you were asked to defend your faith or to answer questions about salvation, like in today's first reading, like, could you do that? How, how well do you know your Catholic faith? I think one of the most penetrating questions I was asked one day, kind of out of jest, but it, boy, it, really, it really struck me. It was a question like, if you know the remote control and how to work the remote control with the lights off better than you know how to navigate the scriptures or, or, or maybe the catechism, then boy, that just kind of tells us where our priorities are. Like if we know more about fantasy football or if we know more about um, the rhythm of the shopping season, then we know more about a basic question about salvation and our Catholic faith. Then I think it just simply exposes a question that we need to ask ourselves, and that's why. Now, I know what you're probably saying to yourself right now, like, Father Mark, I don't have time. Like, I'm busy doing this, I'm busy doing that, I'm busy doing this. And, and, I, and I simply share out of great love, like as a father, asking myself this question, but. You know, as a father asking us all this question, I think that if we don't have time to learn more about our Catholic faith, it's not necessarily our inability to learn more. It's maybe the priorities of our life. I mean, really, have our lives gotten so busy that we've lost time to continue to learn about the most important things? Just a good question for us. And again, I don't think that it's necessarily having the answer right off the top of your head, but I think it's a good question. So as, as we ask the questions this week, I think it's important for us to ask those questions, you know, in lieu of the responsorial psalm from today's Mass, and that was, with the Lord there is mercy and the fullness of redemption, that as we look at our lives with a real sober look, just, just remember that the Lord has mercy upon us and He's always drawn us into a deeper relationship. But with that being said, resting in his mercy, like ask yourself today, do you, do you, do you know the remote control better than you know your, your faith? Do you know how to navigate direct TV or do you know how to navigate the internet or do you know more about fantasy football or, or, or recipes or anything like more than we know about like what's going to get us to heaven? Let's just ask the question today, and if we don't have time for that, man, what is that saying about our life? Again, let's trust the process. Hope comes around the corner tomorrow. But for today, let's ask ourselves, where are we with our knowledge of the faith, and where are we with the time to learn more? And let's trust the God who is rich in mercy, who today is calling all of us deeper, if only we could say yes. God bless you.